often as CEOs who are in the position where we have to motivate our team to be good leaders. So we have a, a table full of managers, and we have to get each of those managers to lead better. So how do you get a manager to lead better? Well, one way is to model excellent leadership all the time. And see, that's a thing I think we forget sometimes. We're in the spotlight all the time. There's no downtime. There's no downtime in the spotlight when you're CEO. That, that thing follows you every moment of the day. So unless you go behind closed doors, you leave the premises, you're on. And so if you were going to demand from your managers excellent leadership, you have to model it all the time. First way of demanding that my managers have leadership skills is to model it because we want them to pick up things that I do. Second thing is you have to use these four things you're, you're blessed with in your head. You've got to be observing and listening like crazy so that you can tell each manager what he or she does well on a consistent basis. This is what I see you're doing well. Now one of the advantages of that, that opens up the, the vessel where they're now going to listen to your criticism because you want to tell them where they need to improve, where they need to upgrade. Now, if you give them instructions about how to upgrade, you better nail them anytime they have the littlest bit of success about that. Once they feel that victory of success, that you've noticed their success, they're going to repeat that success. You have to have quantifiable data, though, to tell them. It can't be about feelings. People don't seem to respect you. Um, you're not a good manager. You need to upscale your management skills. You're not a natural leader. Those things are meaningless to me. That doesn't help me. What do leaders do? They recognize everyone around the table and the excellence each person brings, and they can tell you. So you need to up that. They call people by name. They ask people questions. They listen to those answers of the questions, and they incorporate it into the next thing that they do. They value people. That's what leaders do. And they know where a, uh, their people, their team, is strong and where they're weak. They praise them where they're strong and continue to work on making the strength stronger, and they work to eliminate the weaknesses. So they add to people's toolboxes. What great coaches do, what great leaders do, what great managers do, they add to people's toolboxes. They don't subtract. That's a big mistake I think leaders make. You have to knock that behavior off. It's not helpful. Mm, my behavior is me. So you need to find what about my behavior is useful because you hired me because of my behavior. And then you have to help me to add to my toolbox. Never subtract from a person's toolbox. Add. If I'm arrogant and cocky, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe we can find good for that. So what do I have to add to the toolbox? Humility, appreciation of others. But you don't want me to lose my swagger because that's part of the reason why I'm, I'm a good manager. It's part of my it factor. Never subtract, add.